Today's video is a historic moment for the channel because this is the first time I've managed to get my hands on an AMD GPU in almost a decade. Every generation I've tried, but I've been unable to source a car for testing. But thanks to Asus, that tradition ends today. Nvidia's pricing in recent years has left a lot of PC gamers frustrated. And now more than ever, people are looking to AMD to bring aggressive competition to the market. But is the RX 7900 XTX the RTX 4080 killer that everyone wants it to be? I can't wait to find out. But first, this video was brought to you by VIP SCD Key. If you head over there using my link in the description box below, you'll find they offer cheap OEM Windows 10 keys, for which you can use my discount code TPC, which gives you 25% off, bringing the price down to 16 US dollars. And once activated, you'll be able to upgrade to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Office 2019, which you'll be able to get for only 49 US dollars using the code TPC. So back to the video. So the card that I have here to take a look at is the Asus Tough Gaming Radeon RX 7900 XTX OC Edition. And this is, for now anyway, AMD's highest end flagship RDNA free GPU. And it's so weird for me to see a card that says Radeon on it rather than GeForce RTX. Like I was genuinely starting to think that AMD cards were a myth. If you were hoping AMD cards would be smaller than Nvidia's, I've got some bad news for you. If you were hoping AMD cards would continue this overkill, but quite cool a design trend, then I've got some good news for you. This card is huge. It's bigger than the Palette 4080 I reviewed last month in every dimension. And it's even a little bit thicker and taller than the Strix RTX 4090. Touring the card, it features a very sturdy die-cast frame, and it has an aluminium backplate and fan shroud, which houses three 104mm fans. The heatsink is chunky, and the shroud is very open, allowing for very unrestricted airflow. There's also a little bit of RGB flare here. This card uses three 8-pin PCIe power connectors, which I'm sure will be well received given the recent controversies with the 12 volt high power connector on Nvidia's 40 series. However, the triple 8 pins are much larger, meaning this card has a lot less space to allocate to pass through cooling, which is one of my favourite cooler design trends. So there's a trade-off being made here. Here we have a VBIOS switch, allowing you to switch the card between a performance mode and a quiet mode, and I always love to see dual BIOS cards, as it makes flashing the card stress-free. With the rear I.O., the card has a HDMI 2.1 port and three DisplayPort 2.1 ports. DisplayPort 2.1 means this card supports up to 4K 480Hz or 8K 165Hz. And this is a feature that Nvidia doesn't have. Nvidia's cards are more expensive, so they absolutely shouldn't have outdated display ports. But I think 4K 120Hz is a sweet spot for me for the next couple of generations. So this wouldn't affect my purchasing decisions personally, but this may be a major factor to you. I would also have liked to have seen a USB-C here from Asus, like there is on AMD's reference card. The 7900 XTX has a main 5nm graphics compute die and 6 6nm memory cache die surrounding it. This is a sort of middle ground between a monolithic and chiplet based design, but the main advantage here is that it's cheaper for AMD to make and hopefully some of those savings are passed on to the consumer. The 7900 XTX has 24GB of GDDR6 memory, which follows AMD's trend of offering you more VRAM for your money than the competition does, which I love to see. It also has a 384-bit memory interface, and I've put the rest of the specs on screen next to the 4080s in case you're interested. So in the benchmarks, I'm going to be comparing the 7900 XTX against an Asus RTX 4090 Strix OC, a Palette Game Rock OC RTX 4080, a Gigabyte RTX 3090 Vision, and a Founders Edition RTX 3080. And I'm going to be testing on a system that uses an Intel i9-12900K on an Acer Z690 Pro Art motherboard with a 32GB kit of Team Group Delta RGB DDR5 6000 CL40 memory. And I should say that whilst this is the most powerful system I've access to, I've noticed that I've been running into CPU bottlenecks in some titles when testing in 4K with these higher end GPUs. So be aware that in some of the tests, the 4090 especially, is being held back a little. So first up is Metro Exodus PC Enhanced Edition. And the 7900 XTX makes a very poor first impression here. In fact, I'd go as far as to say that here, it looks more like a last generation card. 
especially as the 3090 Ti isn't included in my testing. This game does use ray tracing exclusively though, and games that make heavy use of ray tracing are something that AMD has struggled with. Luckily, Far Cry 6 gives me a result that is more in line with where I think people expect this card to be, which is in between the 4080 and 4090, because here the 7900 XTX does just that in terms of average FPS, and it matches the 4080 with its 1% lows. Moving on to Forza Horizon 5, unfortunately the 7900 XTX falls behind, and by a significant margin. Forza Horizon 5 has a seemingly light implementation of ray tracing, so I'd expected this to be a title that the 7900 XTX did better in. In Assassin's Creed Valhalla, the 7900 XTX manages a narrow but very much needed victory over the RTX 4080, and we're starting to see a bit of a back and forth here, with two of the benchmarks going to the 7900 XTX and two going to the 4080. Next up is Cyberpunk 2077 with ray tracing on, and this is a game where you'd normally use DLSS or FSR to upscale to 4K, but I haven't done that here, and these are just the native 4K results. And the 7900 XTX doesn't even manage to beat the RTX 3090, which is a card that came out two years ago, which is not what you want to see out of the brand new AMD flagship GPU. I did also test Cyberpunk with RT off though, and here you can see that the 7900 XTX does manage to trade blights with the RTX 4080. So the difference between RT on and RT off here is huge and helps to highlight where AMD's strengths and weaknesses are. Next is Rainbow Six Extraction, and that's another narrow result between the two cards. But with the 7900 XTX, its 1% loads were closer to its average frame rate, which is a good thing for consistent smooth gameplay, but this hasn't been the case for every game. In Horizon Zero Dawn, the RTX 4080 took the lead again, and unfortunately we're starting to see this happen more frequently than we're seeing things go in AMD's favour. I hate seeing how clear ahead the RTX 4090 is in these benchmarks, and would love to see AMD come out of a 7950 series that's able to compete at the top tier of performance. Next up is Control, and given that this is a game that makes good use of ray tracing, I think we all knew how this was going to play out, but you still hate to see it. Again. Here, the 7900 XTX looks more at home competing with the 30 series than it does the 40 series. Moving on to Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and at this point I can almost predict the result before having to see it. One card missing in my testing is the 7900 XT, which comes in cheaper than the XTX that I'm reviewing here, and I'd be really interested to see where the upcoming 4070 Ti sits in relation to these two new AMD cards when it's released. For this video, I wanted to expand on the games used in my last GPU review, so I've added a couple of new titles. The first is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, and I'm so glad that I added this game. Like here we see the 7900 XTX almost reach the heights of the RTX 4090 with its average FPS. This is a much needed victory, and shouldn't be understated given the huge price difference between the XTX and the 4090. I wish I'd seen more results like this one. Because lastly, there's Spider-Man Miles Morales, which is another game with modern ray trace shadows and reflections. So unfortunately, the 7900 XTX disappoints one last time. So looking at a summary of the 7900 XTX's performance numbers, in comparison to the RTX 4080s, you can see a wide range, from minus 32% to plus 22%. And I must say, making this video makes me really nervous, because you can see how much difference game selection makes. Like if a reviewer picks games that perform like Call of Duty, they'll have a very different video than if they pick games that perform like Metro Exodus did. However, 12 games is the most that I've tested in a video before, and these results do tell me what I personally need to know to be able to form an opinion on this car's performance, which is that I'm a little bit disappointed. However, I highly recommend you check out a wide range of reviews with a wide range of data, especially in the games that you play, before making a purchasing decision. In regards to AMD's drivers and software, so far I found it easy enough to adapt and haven't had any issues, but I'd need to deploy the card for longer before I could tell you if I prefer AMD or Nvidia software. I've had a brief play with some overclocking and undervolting, and I do think there's some decent performance games to be had here, enough to beat a stock 4090 in a game like Call of Duty I'm sure. When gaming, there is a bit of coil wine to report, but not as much as I found with the Strix 4090. The junction temperature remains below 80 degrees Celsius, and overall the Asus Tough 7900 XTX remains cool and quiet.
And the total system power consumption when standing in this hallway in control was around 495 watts, which is about 35 watts more than I see in the same test with the RTX 4080. I found that if you switched to the silent BIOS, that lowered the fan speed by about 60 RPM and increased temps by about 6 degrees. But except for the occasional single frame, I saw no major decrease in FPS. And the difference in noise levels here was so subtle that unless your PC is absolutely silent, I doubt you'd notice it and therefore you should just stick with the default performance BIOS. In regards to the tough design of this card, I do think it's quite industrial and therefore very neutral and will look at home in quite a wide range of build colours and themes. And the RGB accenting is subtle, yet still allows you to tie the card into your build's overall lighting theme. So overall, I think Asus has done a great job on their aspect of the car design, and if you were after a 7900 XTX, I'd have no problems recommending you this one, so long as the price is reasonable. Unfortunately, I haven't been told pricing yet, and personally, I wouldn't want to spend more on a 7900 XTX than you could pick up an RTX 4080 for. Concluding my thoughts on the 7900 XTX itself is actually very hard to do, because there's so many caveats and asterisks needed to whatever I say that this video could be hours long. Because like, on one hand, the retail price of this card should be around $200 less than that of the RTX 4080. So any time that this card manages to beat the 4080, or even get anywhere close to its performance, should be a huge win for AMD. And it does manage to do this in some games. However, in other games, especially ones that make use of ray tracing, the 7900 XTX can perform very disappointingly for a flagship card. Nvidia has a comprehensive ecosystem of proprietary technologies like DLSS, which AMD tends to be one step behind at competing with, and with Nvidia having a much larger market share, it's just not good enough for AMD to just fall in line price-wise with where their cards perform relative to Nvidia's. They need aggressive performance matched with aggressive pricing, they need a victory without caveats, and on this, I think that the 7900 XTX misses the mark. To be clear, I'm not declaring the RTX 4080 is the winner here, as the RTX 4080 is overpriced relative to the 4090, and I can't recommend buying one until it's had a price drop. But, simply put, the 7900 XTX being cheaper than an overpriced card doesn't automatically make it a bargain, especially if it's offering less FPS in the games that you play, which is what it does for me. Overall, I'm left feeling like this generation just doesn't yet have an easily recommendable card, and that's extremely frustrating. But I'd love to know your thoughts on the card in the comments down below. If you like this video, please hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and you want to see more of my videos. Thank you so, so much to my incredible patrons who keep the channel running. And thank you all for watching. Bye bye.